There's a wonderful uh, advisory that, ab about fat consumption from the American Heart Association put out, uh, I think, uh, May of 2017. And um, it, the, the only controversial part is saturated fat in coconuts. Uh, and I know they, they got a lot of pushback from even countries who uh, sell a lot of coconut oil and coconut products. And, and, uh, and the data on that is highly controversial. There are people who say, you know, it's a shorter chain saturated fat from coconuts and so it's actually okay. Uh, we probably need more data on that one. But the rest of it's actually pretty clear that if you define, if, if, you, if you separate fats into the four groups, monounsaturated fat, polyunsaturated fat, sat, uh, saturated fat, and trans fats, that the trans fats are the worst, the, followed by saturated fat, and the other two seem to be protective. Now, whether the, that protection is really just substitutionary, that is, if you stop eating uh, trans and saturated fat and you're actually eating more monounsaturated fat, or it's the things that have monounsaturated fat that are good for you, uh, such, that it, such as nuts and olive oil and the like. Um, and I know that there are people here at this conference, Dr. Esselstyn, who believes that all of the fats are bad for your blood vessels and that every bit of difference that we see is that the, the four different kinds of fats do have this rank order, but none of them are really good for you. Um, but it's clear that, the, that trans fat and saturated fat uh, are associated with increasing mortality. Uh, it's been shown in every, every population that's looked at it. And if, if I were to criticize it at all, it would be the fact that, you know, people don't very often, uh, anymore anyway, uh, take, you know, a, a big tub of, uh, of, uh, uh, of saturated fat and eat that alone, right? They don't do that. The saturated fat is in things such as fried chicken or, um, uh, or processed meat. And so that increase in uh, consumption of saturated fat is clouded by other things that are bad for you. So I think it takes an entire baseball team <laughs> um, to pull this uh, nutritional destruction off. And the, the list is probably about nine different things. And if you put them all together, you end up with uh, increasing uh, cardiovascular events and mortality. So um, I think we do have enough data to pick on saturated fat because if you're eating, um, you know, these uh, the, the lean meats, for example, versus fatty meats, the outcomes and the increase in the weight is actually better. You're not going to do as well as if you were doing vegetables, but it is going to be better if you avoid processed meat. Uh, similarly, you're going to uh, do better. So I, th I think the data is pretty strong. I would refer people to that advisory to talk about all of the specific uh, literature that's uh, impugned saturated fat. Um, but I would say trans fats are actually a little bit worse. It's interesting that um, Japan really had a very low amount of sugar and saturated fat and a very low cardiovascular mortality. They still have it. Um, I've been there three times and you know, been at conferences where they're very concerned about their cardiovascular disease rates. Uh, the Japanese Circulation Society and the Japanese Co uh, College of Cardiology are good partners. Um, and we, they've done a lot of uh, advances, uh, particularly in um, you know, being able to open arteries that are completely blocked. They have become, they have, you know, really expert techniques of going, sort of going backwards with a wire. And they're, they're really innovative. But you wonder, when you look at the data, why do they have to deal with that? Because they've done so much. Um, you know, they had a society that was so low in the two things that we know are correlating with cardiovascular mortality, uh, and that's sugar and saturated fat. Now, it's interesting that over the years, they've adept, ad adopted more of a Western lifestyle. And instead of you know, having all of the smoked fish that was giving gastric cancer, okay, um, they're having much more in the way of cardiovascular disease. Historically, uh, that uh, focus on uh, uh, the relationship between smoked meat, in this case, mostly fish, uh, uh, and gastric cancer, 
historically, there were people who thought that it was just genetic. That's just something that Japanese people get. Uh, but then those families would move to the United States and have a Western diet, and the gastric cancer would go away, and they would end up with heart disease instead. And so uh, we're, we're all susceptible to our environments and the things that, uh, uh, that we consume, and we just have to keep learning and keep avoiding. So we, we do see a fair, I don't, I, I, don't, I don't know that I've seen a lot from industry on this. I've seen a lot from industry on eggs, um, I've seen the, uh, the, the sort of the, the red meat uh, folks, the, the poultry folks, I've seen a lot of uh, industry influence and in, uh, particular restaurants. Uh, we were actually uh, doing a little project uh, with my granddaughter, you know, looking at television commercials and whether it was healthful or unhealthful food that's being promoted. So if that's the industry we're talking about, it's rampant, that there are very, there's very few, little of healthy um, food patterns that are being shown to people during television commercials. Well, um, is this really, uh, are they promoting it in terms of health or well-being? They, they actually are, but there's no data behind it to say that, you know, this particular animal is what's for dinner. Uh, this is a, a, a problem that we have to face at some point, uh, but it's a free market society, and so it's hard to rein that sort of thing in uh, because they, have a, they certainly have uh, a right to, um, to promote their product until someone says it's illegal. And that is, it is illegal to put uh, Joe Camel uh, up on a billboard in this country. And so at some point, uh, we have to take these kind of restrictions uh, seriously for all of the things that are, harm our health. Uh, we, you know, and you can argue both sides of that. Uh, there's a wonderful book uh, called Nudge, uh, co-authored by a good friend, uh, Cass Sunstein. And that concept of nudging, I mean, do you really pass a seatbelt law and say that people, you know, click it or tick it? Is that good for society to do that? Is it saving lives and bringing their dad home to the, to the, to the, to the kids um, uh, from work? We think that is a good thing. So then the question is, how far do you go with that? Um, do you say that we're going to cut your taxes or increase your salary or something if you get on the treadmill every day? Um, there's a lot of things that could be done uh, that aren't being done, but um, I would say that uh, reining in industry, uh, like the cigarette industry was reined in years ago, is probably one of the things that we need to do. And it needs to be evidence-based, um, uh, not profit-based. Thank you.